Sadly, there are too many churches in our land that kind of give us this vibe. If we have enough faith, if we receive Christ and serve and tithe, then we're not gonna have any pain and suffering. That does not hold biblical water, I hope you know that. So I want an explanation in my humanity, and the Bible gives me just enough, but I need to rely on revelation to reveal promises of God in pain and suffering, not just on an explanation. Because if I said, God, explain to me, explain to me the what's and the why's in the house, explain to me the suffering, explain to me, explain to me, I would spend my whole life listening. Have you ever been at a party, you're in a conversation and the conversation gets kind of boring, you know? You're like, this is just not going anywhere. If you want people to really kind of freak out, just bring up the subject of pain. They'll go screensaver on you. Just say, I wanna pivot and let's talk about pain. People will nervously laugh and they might look down at their feet. Some will all of a sudden go, excuse me, I have to go to the restroom. We don't like to talk about pain, do we? I mean, let's be honest, pain? But if you ask people, like these people in this conversation, if you ask them several questions about their lives, after a while they'll reveal to you their pain the suffering that they have either gone through, they're processing, or maybe they feel that's on the horizon. Pain. I think the pain question is definitely the biggest beef people have against Christianity. It's called a theodicy. In other words, it goes like this. How can a good God allow bad things to happen to good people? That's a question I've asked before. People will ask me, Ed, how about a school shooting? How about a child dying with cancer? How about a bad report from the doctor. How about, you fill in the blank. How could a good God allow pain and suffering? Now on an intellectual level, sometimes people are really honest when they ask that question. I mean, that's a, that's a good question to ask. Other times it could be a smoke screen because the person throwing that at God, they've never really taken a deep dive into the nature and the character of who God is. So they kind of use that as an excuse not to go to church or not to read the word of God or not even open themselves to the things of God. Still others, when they say that, it's kind of a cry for the companionship of God. They, they feel as though God is unfair, but they want him and they want the presence of God in their life. Those, those are real issues. Thankfully, the Bible is not silent about these issues. The Bible talks about pain. The Bible talks about suffering. If you look at all the other world religions, they don't even compare to how the Bible talks about pain. Just think about Job in the Bible, it's not Job, it's Job. Job went through some hellacious pain. Think about Joseph. He was falsely accused of a crime he didn't commit, sold into slavery and pain. How about the apostle Paul who wrote so much of the New Testament? Paul had pain in his life. He called it a thorn in the flesh. And three times he asked God, God, deliver me from this pain. And in the sovereignty of God, he didn't. Then you have Simon Peter, again, a major player in scripture, pain. 
Now, I'm not trying to be sadistic or like, oh man, this is such a doggy downer pain. I mean, yeah, pain is not fun. It's not easy, but God allows it and God leverages it and uses it for his purposes. The Bible is not a book full of explanations. We have to understand that. Now, it explains a good bit of stuff, but it's really about revelation. It's really about the promises of God. Why is there suffering and pain in the world? Short answer, our world is not perfect. I mean, we live in a fallen, infallible place. I am a self-centered sinner. I'm a worse sinner than I think I am. And so are you. And it's like when I ask God that question, God, I deserve to really know. I mean, give me the 411 here about why our daughter two and a half years ago suddenly passed from this life to heaven. I mean, I'm a pastor. You know, I've lived a, I think, pretty moral life. Not perfect. I've only been with one woman, Lisa, and all that. And God, I mean, I preach sermons and what, what, what? Why, 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 why? And, and, and that's a, a real question. But we live in a place where the Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. The Bible says in this world, you will experience tribulation. We're gonna go through pain. We're all on a path and that path will take us through pain. The path. Have you ever thought about paths just for a second? A path. There are paths everywhere. Paths are made of dirt. They're made of concrete. I would probably say the entire freeway system is a bunch of paths. And man, in Dallas, do we have some potholes in the paths or what? <laughs> but we're all on paths. And Jesus said we're all on either one or two paths. Either you could call it path A or path B. Jesus said in Matthew 7 that... Some are on, in fact, he said most are on the wide path, the popular path, the cool path. And Jesus said that leads to destruction. Then he said, the other path, my path, the road less traveled, is a narrow path. It leads to eternity. So both lead to eternity, one in heaven, one in hell. Jesus, though, talked about, about paths. If you want to talk about pain, think about Jesus, the best ever. And the worst thing happened to the best ever. The symbol of Christianity is a cross, an instrument of pain. So we live in a fallen place. I've caused some bad things to happen to me. So have you because of my, my shenanigans. Other times I've been on the receiving end of the pain or evil in other people's lives. Yet within it all, here's what's so amazing. We have a choice, don't we? We have a free will. And I was thinking the other day, if we didn't have a choice, life would be meaningless. We'd just be robots. I used to do that dance back in the day. It's pretty good still, isn't it? Thank you very much. What do we do, though, when we're walking on a path? What do we do when we're walking through a path of pain? All of us deal with pain. I, I was in the hospital a while back. I had open heart surgery. I was born with a mitral valve prolapse and had to have that valve uh, tweaked and they had to cut me open to do it. I remember in the hospital room, there was this little sign and it, and it had a pain scale, which I thought was interesting. One to 10. You know, at the bottom, one, kind of a smiley face. The top. Well, there I am in the hospital, and I'm going like, ah, it all hurts, man. I can't, I, well, I don't know, my 2.5 or a 7.3, I don't know. It hurts. And whenever we go through pain, maybe you're going through a divorce, maybe you're going through depression, maybe you're fighting an addiction. I, I mean, and you go, no one understands the pain I'm going through. I, I get it. I understand that. 
No one understands your pain. I don't, and I cannot totally identify with your pain. You can't totally identify with my pain. God, though, can. Jesus experienced the ultimate pain, pain like we can't even wrap our brains around, and he did it, check this out, to secure our salvation. So really, the pain, pain draws us to Jesus. The pain of my self-centeredness, the pain of my sinfulness, are you, are you with me? And then God sent Jesus to go through unbelievable pain, separation from God for three days, then he rose again, and my pain leads me to the cross, and it leads to salvation. I mean, that's a, that's a heavy thing to, 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 to think about, isn't it? So think about your pain. Just, just do a pain audit. What are you going through right now? It's all pain. What are you going through? All right, I'm going to challenge you to ask yourself in today's opening session about pain, just four simple questions about pain. That's right. Just four questions. What? I mean, what is the pain and, you know, what should I do? Why? Why the pain, God? When? I mean, when should I tackle this pain? I mean, should I just continue to swim laps in the pool of regret? Would have, should have, could have. And that was very much of a temptation for Lisa and I when, 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 when Lee Beth died for us to just, I don't know, you could call it swimming the rivers of regret or swim upstream and you just play, play out all these scenarios of what I should have done and I, I could have done this and, and that's real. You have to do that, but we have to understand that Jesus is extending his nail scarred hand out to us when we're in that pool, when we're in that river and he wants to pull us out. We have to have a time, and I'm gonna talk about this, where we move on. It's not that we don't still walk with the limp, but we have to move through our pain, and that's one of the reasons why we wrote this book, not only about our pain, but the pain that, that everyone deals with. So, what, why, when, and where? I'm like, okay, where, where, where is this pain taking me? Where? Because my outlook determines the outline of my life, and then that leads to the outcome, if we do it God's way, that he desires, and that's the best outcome that we could ever, ever dream of. So my outlook, what's your perspective, what's my perspective on pain? Okay, and then, when I say, okay, God, I'm gonna look at it the way you look at it, then suddenly I see God's outline for my life, his priorities. And as I've said and written about many times, we don't even have to argue about priorities. They're in stone, the Bible has them there. So if I'm, if I'm in the right outlook and then I'm, I'm living by the outline, then the outcome is going to be Awesome. It might not be exactly the way I would script it, but when I move from this life to the next, I'll look back and go, wow, it was all for the glory of God. I don't, though, understand why God allows all of these things in our lives. I can give you some reasons, but I don't understand it all. If God did explain everything to us, we don't have the bandwidth to even understand it. And we think in our humanity, oh, I, I could understand it. No, no, no. And we're gonna talk about that in a second. So what, what should I do? Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six. What should I do? Why, when, and where? What? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. That's the first thing, trust. And we all trust. And this word trust, means to lie helpless before God. Isn't that crazy? It's a picture of a defeated soldier at the feet of a general. And we've all tried to 
to win our way. We've all tried to do life our way. I have. And self-sufficiency leads to self-deception. And that just doesn't work because if we stay with it, it'll lead to self-destruction. That's why God says trust. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. What does the word heart mean? Well, I know this, the heart is the center of everything. The heart here in the Hebrew literally means our will, our mind, our emotions. It's, it's the totality of who we are. We trust God with it. Now Solomon was writing this. Solomon had Elon Musk type money. The guy had 40,000 horse stables. Billions in this trust fund. Billions in that trust fund. He wrote over 3,005 Proverbs. He was like the man. He wrote this, most scholars believe, in his late 30s, early 40s, as a father writing to his son. So he's saying, son, you're going to go through difficulty. Son, you're going to go through great times and difficult times. What do you do? You trust in the Lord with all your heart. I don't know about you, but I'm emotional. I'm kind of an emotional person. I don't know if it has to do with ADD, but you know. And when I trust my emotions, they, they don't always take me to where I should go. But it's so sexy these days to say, go with your heart. I met this guy online and he has a full head of hair and a Rolex watch. I'm just going to trust my heart. Well, I, I, I understand the romance. I understand how cool that sounds. In reality, we have to trust God with our heart. Trust him with our emotions. Trust him with our will. Trust him with our intellect. That is what Solomon was driving at. So what? Trust. Trust. Okay, the next question, Why? Why should I trust God? I'm a why guy. I want explanations. Why? Why? Well, because I don't understand. The Bible says, and lean not on your own understanding. If I leaned on this lectern, it's going to fall over. And too many times I've leaned on my own understanding. And, and when I do that, for example, some of the pain and suffering that Lisa and I have gone through, when I do that, I can go down that rabbit hole and stay in that rabbit hole. Why, 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 why? And, and, and don't get me wrong, it's fine to say why. It's great to say why God, but very quickly you have to move from why God to what now? I mean, what do I do? What do you have for me? Because the enemy wants us to stay buried in that rabbit hole trying, as I said earlier, to understand we're not going to comprehend it totally. And in fact, most things in life that we trust, we don't even understand anyway. I mean, do we really understand gravity? Not really. What? Trust. Why? Lean not on your own understanding. Okay. When? Okay. When? When should I do this? Now. You like that move? Now. In all your ways not some of them, acknowledge him. And this word acknowledge in the, you're probably talking about it today over morning coffee. This word, this word uh, acknowledge is pronounced in the Hebrew, yada. I like that. Yada. Yada means I submit totally God to you. Here's what's interesting about Jesus. Jesus talked a lot about people who didn't trust and he said, man, you're, you're missing it if you don't trust me. He also talked about people who had one foot in and one foot out. One foot on the rock and one foot in quicksand, which I'll talk to you about in a second, quicksand. And he said, those people are almost as wheels off at the, as the ones that totally don't trust. So this is like, this is like, I'm, I'm putting all the chips on the table. I'm playing all my cards. I, I give it all to you. So in all of my ways, 
I acknowledge you. That's when, right now. The Bible says, today is the day of your salvation. And where? Well, he will make your path straight. God will make your path straight. And the, and the picture behind this, if you know anything about travel in, in ancient days, the roads were really treacherous. Again, like some of our roads here in Dallas-Fort Worth. You know, potholes everywhere. And, and, and there, were, there were robbers and there were all sorts of just, just gnarly things that could happen. So when a king would travel, his posse would go before him and remove all the roadblocks and stuff and take care of the robbers so he could make, the advance team would make the king's paths straight. And I've got some good news for you. Our great God is going before you. He's going before me, making our paths straight. And I don't know exactly how he does it, but he, but he does. And this word path, I want you to think about this word path. It's a purpose that always takes us to him. God's purpose for your life, it always takes us to him because we're here to glorify God. There's some questions we need to ask ourselves about pain. Let me go through them again. What? What? Okay, in my paint, trust. Why? Because we're not that smart. When? Well, in all my ways, I, I submit to you everything, God. Where? Well, in the paths of life, you're gonna make the paths straight. I've always been intrigued by jungles. I don't know why, I just, I grew up watching Tarzan. I love the Discovery Channel. And a while back, I decided to go to a jungle I'd, I'd never been. So I went to a jungle in Central America. I mean, ooh, 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 ah, 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 the real deal. Pythons. There was a snake in this area called the Fertilance, a two-step snake. If it bit you, you have two steps, boom, you're out. Saw water crocodiles, quicksand. I told you I'd bring up quicksand. All of this stuff that would mess you up. There was a plant called the chichen. I mean, this thing's from hell. If you just rub up against it, it would rot your skin to the bone. And I had this, this backpack on kind of thing, and I fell, that's another story, while I was walking down this path, and I just rubbed up against chichen. I knew I was in trouble when the little Mayans were like, what they got that chichen, chichen, chichen. And I watched it rot this bag right in front of my eyes. Yes, anyway. So I'm like, okay. I want to I wanna hike in this jungle. So again, I was with uh, several Mayans and, and they, <laughs> they, they didn't speak English that well, but they were about this tall. Strong as mules, man. And the, these Mayans, in their way, told me they were gonna take me through this path. And one of the Mayans had a machete and a car battery on his shoulder because we were going to this thing called a panga, a wooden boat, and we're gonna travel in this swamp or whatever at the end of this trail. So I go into the jungle with the lead Mayan and the Mayan in the back, he was carrying this electric motor. Now I know why he was there. He was there to kill snakes and crocodiles and pull me out of quicksand or whatever. So I'm, I'm just following these, these, these guys, but I'm following the main guide and, and I, I knew he was telling me to step where he was stepping. So I'm like, okay, I trust you, my man. So I walk in, I'm just covered with mosquitoes. And, 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 and so he, he steps there and I step there. I'm thinking to myself, I would naturally step there. That's weird. And then I find out, well, it's quicksand there. Okay, it's pretty good. And so then we step over here. And that's when I kind of fell. Remember the time and got the chichen on me? And he, he quickly pulled me up, you know? And so, so we're, I'm, I'm still walking, following him. I'm in his footsteps. And at the same time, he's carrying this battery. Whoosh, whoosh. He's just chopping these massive branches and all this vegetation. He's literally cutting a path out for me. And we got to the end and got in the boat and everything it was cool. But... Think about what was taking place. 
Was I trusting him? You better believe it. What if I had said, no, 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 I, uh, I understand the jungle. <laughs> I've seen these television shows and, you know, I just let me do what I want to do. I, I, could, have, I could have gotten killed. I mean, like that. I followed him. I submitted myself to him. And he made the path as best you could in the jungle straight. This is what Jesus does in pain and in suffering. That's what Jesus does through sickness, through questions, through death, through separation, through addiction. That's what Jesus does as we walk, here's the key, through this path that so often has pain. So it's our prayer during this series, today, this Wednesday, and next Sunday, that we'll do that pain audit, that we'll ask these tough questions and answer them God's way. Because remember, God's path and God's purpose will take you places that you never dreamed possible. Lord Jesus, thank you for this message. I thank you for every single person here. God, you know the pain. You know what we're all processing, whether it be emotional, whether it be relational, whether it be occupational, recreational, whatever it is, God, we just trust you in it right now. And I pray that we lean on your understanding, not that we check our intellect at the door, but that we lean on you and lean on your church, your people to walk with us. May we submit, I know that's hard for us to do, our lives once again to you. And I thank you in advance for where you're taking us, God. You're taking us through it to a place of glory and honor and power like our best plans can't even attempt to explain. Hey, if you're here and you've never asked Christ into your life, I'm gonna challenge you to give your life to him. Give to Jesus all you know about you. And he will give you all you know about him. Just ask him to come into your life. Just say, Jesus, I repent. I know it's by the power of the gospel that I have this ability to do this. And right now I respond to that. So Father, continue to guide us and direct us as we worship you and as we meet with you in the middle of the week and then next week. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi guys, thank you so much for watching the Ed Young YouTube channel. That's right, and if you wanna be inspired, encouraged, and challenged like never before, subscribe and click the notification button. We believe this channel can help change your life. 